When it happened, few people were wholly receptive to the information. Most looked at the headlines and the photographic evidence, and even hours and hours of video and near universally came to the same conclusion. Hoax. These images of skulking near-human figures, these terabytes of footage from doorstep cameras of near-familiar animals and half-formed bipeds, these were all clearly fakes. All obviously frauds. The weekend projects of bored students and clout-seeking graphic designers. It was the only logical answer, of course. After all, this was hardly anything new. Legends and myths about cryptids and fake creatures were nearly as old as mankind itself, and even so-called photographic evidences of such things had proven time and time again to be nothing but the works of very talented fakes. AI image generation was clearly being used to mass-produce this footage. Multiple experts and long-time hobbyists in the field of computer sciences, art, and photo manipulation swore on their lives they could easily reproduce these results. Government pundits and activists of innumerable special interests used this trend of the week to soapbox their social snake oil philosophies, how they might cure the societal ills that have caused this baseless panic, while the content mills of countless websites took this opportunity to feed on the public's lust for knowledge and insight into these strange occurrences, be it mere sensationalism, doomsaying, skepticism, or even the odd bit of merchandising. Before a week had passed, World agencies, both public and private, had given in to the pressure from higher powers and began actively suppressing this flagrantly false information. Any who spread rumors of creatures in the dark, or ghoulish figures stalking the back alleys of large cities, were hurried by a thousand modern countermeasures, made to ensure the flock did not turn on the shepherds in panic and fear. If the speaker could not be controlled, they were dissuaded through redirection of finances. If they were small, a few tweaks to search algorithms would ensure more trusted voices were heard instead. If neither applied, some form of drama was drummed up to discredit the speaker so that more socially acceptable voices may take the reins. In this way, the news of a couple of hikers being swallowed by a living hill, or a strange centipede more than ten feet in length taking up residence at the bottom of a septic tank in a Mississippi suburb, remained the subject of mere tabloid conjecture for a few more weeks. However, as these things tend to go, no amount of suppression or coercion can mask the truth forever. When doors are being caved in and buckled in the middle of the night by a howling wind that called the name of the home's occupants, when trees start growing rapidly, consuming old foundations on the outskirts of major cities and turn away even industrial lumber equipment, when animals start talking to their owners, demanding to be set free to find the black floodlands, those same countermeasures start to look less like guidance from wiser minds and more like the soft and quiet tyranny from fools unwilling to accept a changing world. And as it turns out, when a Secretary of State conducts interviews with previously suppressed outlets ranting and raving about a quasi-human skeletal figure that had appeared in his study every night for the last three weeks to make inquiries about the nature of governance and his role in it, it tends to make even the most hardened skeptic sit up and take notice. It was from this interview the source of these recent happenings were revealed. No great motive, no threat from a distant power. Satan was not at the gates for the souls of humanity, nor had God's judgment come down from on high to smite man for his sin. Not yet, at any rate. No. For all the strange happenings, for all the odd happenstance, the explanation of the skeletal creature to this official had been agreeably straightforward, if intolerably vague and in the figure's own words, it was nothing more than an invitation from old acquaintances. The light of man ebbs, and the night meadow waxes strong. Come, dance with us as you did when your race was young and yet to know the light, and embrace this visit from the transients of Ulnock.